that was a mistake. That's so bad. What are the odds of that? Good morning. Boy, do we have a busy day. I put out a post yesterday on Instagram with anticipation of doing a Q&A, my first one, so welcome. And you guys submitted a whole bunch of questions, which is fantastic. So we're gonna head to the beach pretty soon. A Little bit later in the day, we'll then head to the field and do a full training session. So think warm up, some ball work and some drills and finish with some shooting and free kicks. And then we'll dial it down a little bit, do a quick fire round of questions before finishing the day in perhaps my favorite way. So all of that whilst answering the most poignant questions that you have put forth. I'm looking forward to it, welcome. So yeah, these are four of the most used items I own. First up, we have a slant board. And this guy's proven to be very useful. In the past, I've used a variety of things. Basically something that allows you to lift your heels so that you can work on building strong, resilient knees in your spare time. There's a channel I follow that talks about the benefits along with a whole host of exercises and routines called the Knees Over Toes Guy. I'll link his channel below. But essentially, I use the ball to do a bunch of backside stretches, but also squats and split squats that help build strength and flexibilities in those areas we use most. Do aspiring footballers need to go to the gym? A suspension trainer, so a TRX. Um, a foam roller. You gotta love a foam roller. You got to foam roll. It, no, definitely not. Should you exercise outside of football? Absolutely. Yeah, I think doing um, some strength building in your own time, flexibility training is just gonna make you a more resilient player overall. I must look so awkward right now. Uh, and then this guy, this is, this is funny. This, um, this is a footrest for my wife. And yes, Tom, I am married to this beaut and have been for, cause she had an ankle, a really bad ankle hmm. sprain and work sorted her out with a footrest and it's adjustable. And I use this probably more than she does. This is one of my favorite exercises. I love it. And perhaps my favorite, the backwards walking sled pull or log pull. Yeah, just go back and forth for like 10 minutes. And if you don't have a log, a TRX or a beach, you can find yourself a hill or maybe just run back and forth. That will get the same effect. This is really gonna help. Do I have an editor? I do not. I do the editing, I do the filming, I do the football. Yeah, and I've learned pretty much all of it from YouTube. And the third episode of Seven Signs, You're a Good Footballer. When is that coming out? I haven't forgot about it. It's coming out in the new year. I, it's all filmed, it's all planned out, but I just haven't put it together and edited it. So, haven't forgot about it. It's very much there and um, it's just gonna be a little bit longer. Sorry. Oh, is that another message? Sinjad8443 says, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. How's the weather in New Zealand? And that's, wow, it's, it's windy. But that's why I set up in front of these trees here to block the wind. Someone also asked, do I like these boots? Um, no, I don't. They make a weird like clicking noise when I walk. And they're really uncomfortable. What else do we have? There's like five to seven questions sort of around the same thing. And that's like, 
had to come back from certain injuries. Why is knee pain so prevalent in football and uh, ACLs and, and things such as that and how to prevent all of these issues coming up. And I think that's the key really is trying to be preventative first and foremost. Also making sure that you're warming up correctly and preparing your body for movement is one of the easiest ways to prevent injuries and recurring injuries especially. So when you get to the field, prioritize getting the blood pumping around the body and try your hardest to get out of the habits of just striking a ball as soon as you get there. Take it nice and easy and prepare your body. Your body will thank you for it. I am terrible at setting up cones, by the way. They're always wonky. Viron asks, how do I keep the ball at my feet? Just like a lot of football, it is simple, but we tend to overcomplicate it and try and do a little bit too much for our ability. So if you're pretty new to football, then running full pelt with the ball at your feet, you're probably gonna lose control quite quickly. Mistake, so focus on taking your time, going slow, many small touches, keeping your head down, watching the ball. A lot of people will say to keep your head up when you're dribbling, and it's all well and good, but when you're first learning, first getting used to moving this thing around with your feet, it's pretty hard. It's pretty hard going. So being okay looking down, figuring out how this ball moves, how your feet move with the ball. And then once you eventually develop that confidence, that's when you can look to get your chin up, look ahead and sort of keep it in your peripheral, the ball that is. Scanning and awareness. I think first and foremost, with scanning awareness, it's nice to have and to train and it's, it's an ideal for sure, especially the further you progress in your game. But when you're first learning, I would actually stay away from lifting your head up and scanning because you haven't gotten the basics down of just controlling the ball or understanding how to navigate this circular thing with your feet that you, you've not really used in this way before. So I'd prioritize keeping your head down and actually getting many touches on the ball. Get used to how it moves. Then you can start to go into the steps of, okay, before I'm receiving the ball, let's take a look around, what's around me? But focusing on actually making eye contact with the ball as it's coming to you until you've controlled it. If you do want to practice it, you're at that level, I would prioritize doing it when you're off the ball. Take a look around you and sort of observe where players are in the pitch. Take a mental note of that so that when you do receive the ball, maybe it's five seconds later, at least you had a little bit of an idea. There's a bush there. Obviously it changes quite quickly. So you're gonna to have to eventually speed that up a little bit and take a glance closer to actually receiving the ball. But getting used to it, that's what I would do. But focus on controlling the ball first. And don't rush it. it takes time. How can I improve my stamina fast? Definitely do exercises like that. It's those variations in speed and intensity that's really gonna help with your stamina on and off the pitch. Off the pitch. Wow, the ground is hard. Good exercises for strikers, I would say is a lot of variation in your shooting drills. So for example, a pass here, a bit of a dribble, step over or two, and then striking into the bottom corners, just making sure that you're precise with it. What is my favorite skill? I have two and I use them all the time. And one is going to the left, one is to the right. So I have a bit of variation and it works almost every time. Damn it. That's so bad. So how do you bend it? Uh, first and foremost, I'd, I'd definitely recommend being as close to the goal as you can and focus on getting the technique down. So getting the standing leg nice and close to the ball. The issue with that when you're first learning is sort of feels like you're tying up your hips and you sort of have no space to go. 
So in order to allow that leg to come through, you really need to load into that standing leg and bend it so that your leg can contact the ball and essentially whip it where your standing foot is pointing. So right in the corner there. And keep your head down, focus on the ball. Don't worry about where the ball's going and that will give you the best chance. How to hit top bins. That went top <laughs> bins. Holy, really ton of practice and it takes time to be able to pick it. Uh, I did not catch that on camera. High probability of you scoring if you get it top bins, but also higher probability of you missing because it is challenging to get there. It's better to hit it shorter so it drops lower down into the corner than sky in it. So uh, as long as you're aiming for that corner, then that's all you can hope for. So let's try. So that was aiming top bins. Didn't quite get it, but that's definitely definitely going to challenge the keeper. That was a little too central, that one. See, I would have preferred that to be a little bit lower, obviously. Sort of there, that would be ideal. Oh my God. What are the odds of that? How to deal with pre-match nerves? Good question, Dylan. Nerves are good. I think nerves show that you, you care and that you wanna, you wanna do well. It means a lot to you. So like for me, I, I get nervous when I go and play just five a side. I'm just gonna strike one more and it's good, but it's how do you channel those nerves? Do you allow them to get the best of you or do you use them to your advantage? I'm gonna absolute wallop this one. So what I found to, to work really well is developing a bit of a routine on match day. If you can get into a bit of a routine that really works for you. That was close. Then you can stick to that routine and really set yourself up so you're going into the game consistently, whether that's the same food on the, on the match day or the same breathing exercise or the way you put socks on. Like all of these little, little things are helpful. Superstitions are a big part of sport and I think that's why it's sort of a, a way of dealing with the pressure and the nerves. So nerves are good. If you find you're, they're getting the best of you, then my recommendation is to always start the first 10 minutes as simply as possible. Just think short, simple passes to your teammates. It doesn't have to be anything elaborate. Get a feel for the ball, uh, get a feel for the pitch, the weather conditions, and you can start to build a bit of a rhythm into the game and start to gain that confidence. It's a 90 minute game. It doesn't all have to be done in the first five or 10 minutes. Do you wish to continue? Thank you for shopping. Get ready for a bike ride. I ran out of time. Yeah, I went to the supermarket, got my favorite drink, which is coconut water, by the way. So good. I stretched, had a good dinner, and then headed south for 10 days. Yeah, we did some photo taking, we did some filming. Oh, I missed it. Which, by the way, look at this pitch. One shot. That will be coming soon. But anyways, I forgot to do a quick fire round. So I have like eight to 10 questions here that will roll through nice and quickly, just to finish off. What, to <laughs> what team do I support? Arsenal. Who's my favorite player of all time? Thierry Henry or Dennis Burkamp? Do I play for a team? I do not anymore. I do uh, YouTube full time. That keeps me very busy. Okay, I think that shot is good. And I also do some coaching on the side as well. Okay, we've got to change angles. Ready? And play recreationally, just with like a social team. All right, we've got our our other shot. It's fun. Favorite knuckleball goal from the knuckleball video? 
that would be this one. When is your training program coming out? So that's why I haven't been super consistent on YouTube because I've been working on the training program. I'm hoping at the end of January, which will celebrate the one year on YouTube, which would be amazing. Do I believe sleep slash sleep quality has an impact on performance? 100% I do. Sleep is where your body repairs itself and not getting enough of it means that those training sessions are not gonna have the same benefit if you're always behind on sleep. So trying to get eight, 10 hours, whatever you feel that you naturally need to get in order to feel energized, that would be my recommendation. So try and get some good sleep. How long have I played football for? Um, ever since I was, could start walking basically. So that'd be 30 odd years, yeah. How do I deal with failure and overthinking? Big question. Failure is inevitable. If you're putting yourself out there and you're, you're testing your limits, then odds are you're gonna fail most of the time. That's all part of learning and developing your craft as a footballer. I think the key is changing your relationship to failure and using it as a powerful tool to learn and reframing what it means to you is the key really. And I used to let this massively affect me when I lost the ball or- Oh my God. I just made mistakes. Mistake. mistake. They're, they're gonna happen on the pitch, but- That was a mistake. The key is how you move on from them and do you learn from them? Because it is inevitable that you're gonna make the wrong decisions. <laughs> It was a terrible pass. But if you can learn from those mistakes, that's where I think the, the power really lies, is when you see your failures and your mistakes and you can apply the lessons that you learn from them, that I think is the key. But there's a lot to unpack there, so I'll leave it at that. Maybe we'll visit it another time. Best way to end the day. Well, although I forgot to film this the first time, I didn't skip out on my favorite way to end the day, especially after a lot of exercise. And whether that's a cold shower, cold bath, or going in the ocean that's freaking cold. I just can't think of a better way to finish the day. So, um, yeah, that's, that's all. Thanks for being here. Thanks for, for watching and the questions that you put forwards. I really appreciate it and I hope you got something out of this video if nothing at all it was fun hanging out so appreciate it and we'll see you very very soon happy new year